Hey, Summerhill Cinema 700 here with a Movie Dash Blu-ray review of the 1976 film Burnt Offerings. Now, I previously recorded this video, but it ended up being like 22 minutes long, and I just I gave every single detail of the film, and I wanted to just do a, a more brief review without giving away too much. So I had never seen this film before, and I, I picked up this Blu-ray when the Kino was having their sale a couple months back. You probably saw that big haul that I got if you watch my videos, but uh, uh, never seen this film before. And to be honest with you, what uh, what sold this film for me was the cover. Not even knowing much about it, just that cover with the stone engraving, with the vines around it, burnt offerings, with the cool looking kind of haunted house in the background. And then I read a little bit about it and thought, uh, oh, this looks uh, really cool. So I picked it up, watched it uh, yesterday for the first time. And I uh, enjoyed it. So I'll just read what the back says. And then I'll uh, kind of give a little bit of info on the movie without giving away too much. <laughs> Evil has a new home. Step inside a vacation house of horror in this terrifying thriller that does for summer homes what Jaws did for a dip in the surf. Karen Black, Oliver Reed, and Betty Davis star in this riveting haunted house chiller that delivers hidden terrors mounting creepily as this film builds to a climax of pulverizing fright. Um, Marion Black and Ben Reed find it hard to believe that for only $900 they've rented a, sp a sprawling country mansion for the entire summer, but as they settle into their isolated estate with their son and Ben's aunt, they find themselves surrounded by an evil, hypnotic, living presence that feeds on torture, fear, and murder. The stellar cast includes Bergice Meredith, uh, who's in The Sentinel, Aline Heckart, who's in The Bad Seed, Dub Taylor from Gator, and Anthony James, who's in High Plains Drifter, co-writer, co-written, produced, and directed by horror legend Dan Curtis of Dark, who did Dark Shadows. Uh, so yeah, basically it's this film is about this, uh, like I mentioned, um, this husband, wife, their son, and then um, I guess it's the husband in the movie, his aunt. So she's an older lady. We'll just say he's like the kid's grandma, basically. And uh, they're renting this house out for the summer, and it's like this beautiful like Victorian-era estate in the countryside, massive house. And they go to this place, and they, they're gonna, they want to rent it out. And um, they find out that it's only $900 a month. So they're like, they end up leaving and they're like, well, this is really weird. Like, what's the catch? And basically the catch is that they can rent the house out for $900 a month. But there's going to be one other resident in the house of them. And that is the owner's mother, who is a, like a, a very old lady. And they say she just stays up in her room and doesn't come out much. And you just have to bring her food like a couple times a day. So right off the bat, we're like, that's kind of like creepy. So they're going to be staying in this house with this old lady son. They end up accepting it. They go back and the owners have already left, left them a note. They're like, enjoy it. So enjoy the house for the summer. Have a great time and whatnot. And uh, you, when you do see the owners at the start, you get a really weird vibe. Like there's this older lady and uh, an older guy in a wheelchair. <laughs> And they're just kind of talking about how the house kind of takes care of itself and how you don't need to do much and it's almost like the house has a mind of its own. And as the film goes on, basically what starts to happen is we see this family and they're living in this house and they're starting to get really, they're starting to change a lot. For an example, not so much with the young boy, but the husband in the movie, he's starting to get, uh, he's starting to become more angry and he's starting to be abusive towards his son and his wife. And there's a really like disturbing scene where he's like, it happens in a swimming pool. I won't give away what happens, but it's kind of a disturbing scene where he starts like abusing his son. And then he starts, like I said, being abusive to the wife. Now the wife starts kind of becoming obsessed with this, this, the room upstairs where the uh, old lady is staying. And throughout the film, you see the wife bring the old lady meals she leaves them outside her door, but you never see the old lady come out. And you see the wife knocking on the door, and she never comes out, so you don't really see her um, until the very ending of the film. And uh, basically, all this crazy stuff's going on. And then the older lady, who, like I said, is like the grandma to the boy, 
who's also living with them in the house for the summer, she's starting to, like, age really fast. Like, she's starting to just, like, go really downhill. Every day she's starting to look older. So everyone's just kind of going a little bit crazy and just stuff start, really strange stuff is starting to happen. The kid's starting to get, like, sick. And some weird things are happening to him. He's getting hurt. And uh, it's just really interesting to see how this house is, like, almost, like, changing them. It's like the house has a mind of its own. And then also... Um, Whenever they're like, say they have dinner or something, or they mess up a room, the room seems to be like super tidy like the next day, like the house is taking care of itself. So it's a really uh, strange film. And then also, while all these strange things are happening in the house, and we know that there's this old lady staying upstairs, but we never see her, the uh, husband is also having these like strange, like reoccurring dreams, these weird nightmares where there's like this guy and it's kind of scary and it's also kind of funny though because it's just like such a weird character so he has these reoccurring nightmares and he also has these hallucinations hallucinations of like this car driving by and then this guy's sitting in the car and he has these sunglasses on like this and he just kind of looks like this he's like and it's just really weird like there's all these scenes and the guy's like this really slender um actor i think his name is uh anthony james i believe and uh he just has a really uh, intriguing look about him, and it's just such a—it's a very strange film. Not a not a lot of actually like you don't see like a lot of like you don't see any ghosts at all in this film. You don't see any monsters or like you don't see actually a lot of paranormal stuff happening in this film. Well, I shouldn't say that there is paranormal stuff happening, but you don't see any like apparitions or ghostly figures or anything like that. None of that is just. Um, it's not even like bumps in the night, so it's just all of a sudden, like sometimes like the power will go out, go on. It's more just like things happening to people, like they're getting hurt. Like for an example, there's a scene, like I said, in the pool where all of a sudden um, the dad just goes kind of crazy. Um, and then there's also a scene where the kid's swimming in the pool and all of a sudden like there's big waves and stuff and the dad can't do anything. So it's just like since they rented out this house for the summer, the dad's becoming very angry. Just The mom's becoming obsessed, like I said with the room upstairs and also just taking care of the house like it's her number one priority and um in the top of the house there's also all these like portraits of like people who have lived in the house throughout the years and throughout the decades because this house is like has a crazy history behind it it's been there for like at least like a hundred years or something and it's had lots of people live in it so the wife spends a lot of time up in that room looking at the pictures and also listening to like this music box. So just like everybody's changing for like the worst and a lot of strange stuff is starting to happen. And basically um, towards the end of the film, they they know that they just they have to get out of there because stuff is becoming too weird. And then there's a scene where before they leave, um, the wife goes back into the house just to make sure that the old lady staying upstairs is okay before they leave. And then that's like the shocking ending when we um, we finally get to see who uh, the uh, old lady living upstairs is. And that part of the film is pretty damn creepy. Um, besides that, I didn't find myself like frightened much in this film. There's not really many jump scares, but it has a really kind of like a creepy atmosphere. And this house is an absolutely great location for a film like this. I don't know if that's an actual house that they filmed it at or if it was a prop because I know I remember for years I thought that the house in Salem's Lot, the original miniseries, was a real place but it was actually a uh, set, like a prop they built the house for the film. So I wonder if that's the same with this or if it actually is a Victorian era uh, home but it's an absolutely beautiful old house. But anyways, this is um, a pretty good movie. It's not by any means great, but it's uh, good. It's entertaining. Uh, all the actors in this film and actresses, uh, I think, do a really good job with their characters. And it's got a nice kind of classical music soundtrack, too. This movie kind of reminded me a little bit of The Changeling. I don't know if you've seen that film. I did a review on it if you want to find out more about it. Uh, the Changeling is definitely a better film, in my opinion, but this has that same kind of haunted house vibe to it. A little toned down, a little not, well, not even close to as scary as The Changeling, but uh, that same kind of similar vibe of something weird going on in the house, but not necessarily seeing a ton of, not seeing any like ghostly figures or anything, but more relying on just strange things happening and people's minds kind of going crazy. So if you've seen this film before and you want something to watch something similar or something a little bit scarier, The Changeling is definitely a good option uh, for you. And I'll just grab the Blu-ray here for a second. Um, 
I don't want to make this video about this film, but uh, Severin did a great Blu-ray on this. And you get a Blu-ray and a CD soundtrack, which I did a review on, I think, uh, last year around this time. Or it might have been two years ago. I think it was last year around this time. But uh, very awesome film as well. But back to uh, Burnt Offerings. Out of ten stars, I'd probably give it maybe a, a six or something like that. Um, it's definitely an entertaining film, and it was worth the buy if you can find it for, like, under $25. I think I got this for, like, under 20 um, as far as the Blu-ray goes, this Blu-ray's from Kino Lorber. It's a single disc set. You just get the plain kind of looking disc of Kino releases. No, I had never seen this film before, so I don't know what picture quality looked like on previous releases, but the picture quality on this was uh, pretty damn good. Um, we get an interview with the uh, actor Anthony James, who was the guy who played the kind of creepy sunglasses apparition. So I guess there was kind of an apparition in this film. It was him. So I kind of lied when I said there wasn't a lot, but other than that, there wasn't a ton. But it was more of almost like a hallucination, too. So we got an interview with actor Anthony James, which I watched a bit of, and it was pretty entertaining. Uh, interview with screenwriter William F. Nolan. Interview with actor Lee Montgomery. Audio commentary with the director, uh, co-writer and producer, uh, as well as actress Karen Black and co-writer William F. Nolan. Uh, we got an audio commentary by film historian Richard Harlan Smith. Trailers from Hell animated montage of images and original theatrical trailer. The film's 116 minutes long, and again, it's from 1976. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of a good, uh, cool film to watch this time of year. You know, uh, Halloween time, these types of movies. There are certain movies I like to watch more so in Halloween, kind of have a dark, darker kind of feel to them. Um, when it comes to, like, you know, Slash or Friday the 13th films, I prefer to watch those, like, in the summertime. But I think this is a good uh, movie to watch this time of year, Halloween season. So anyways, that's my Movie Dash Blu-ray review of 1976's Burnt Offerings. Let me know if you've seen the film. If so, what do you think of it? And we'll see you on the next video. Thank you very much for watching.